it's, it's also that we live in a funny time when lots of the tropes of the supernatural are, are more successful than ever before, but not necessarily because they're scary. So the ways in which, say, paranormal romance, whatever that means, has taken things like the vampire and the ghost and werewolves and things that used to be fundamentally fear-inducing things and are using them, really, they're repurposing them for other things. I mean, Twilight is terrifying, so... Well, yeah, well, yeah, but not necessarily for the reasons it thinks. But the, the, my point being, in an era like that, when kind of gothic supernatural tropes are actually kind of maybe comforting, in part because they are reassuring about the possibility of an afterlife or of, of a god Warm or all kinds of things, when reality is filled with these stories of... Uh, here's a guy who kept a whole second family in a basement and yada, 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 you know, or Newtown or whatever. So suddenly we also may be in a moment when things ripped from the back pages of a newspaper or from the, the parts of the local news you don't want to watch are actually more frightening than the traditional, especially supernatural um, elements that made up the genre. And, and in a way, I would suggest it's actually not a genre I, I, in the sense that by film genres, usually we mean a set of conventions that you know, uh, really are quite constraining in terms of the subject matter, the location, a Western uh, uh, or an Eastern, like a film noir uh, or a city movie or, or a, uh, a musical. I mean, they, they, these define pretty narrowly what it is. Uh, but horror, I would submit, actually doesn't. And, and, and Mickey sort of indicated that. You could put horror into any context. It, it really is... I'm not even sure what the, there's, I'm sure in literary theory, some correct term for it, but there's some other term for it. So if you go back to someone like Aristotle, he's just talking about only, there's only two, right? It's either comedy or tragedy. And I, and I would submit that horror is just uh, tragedy. So that, that in, in the sense that we now exist in a moment when you could actually integrate, because of a lot of the forces, I think especially Mickey was talking about, the mainstreaming of horror, that you could go into any type of story, any historical period, um, any context, and bring... Um, the elements of horror, that is, that it's going to scare people, that it's, that it's going to um, raise these issues of physical mortality and, and, and et cetera, et cetera. And, and, that, and that is a really fruitful area, and I think we will see more of that. While at the same time, yes, the, the really understanding that break out of this notion that, oh, it's just these little conventions of a haunted house or this, and say, no, I could take any situation, any period in history, any famous circumstance, a fairy tale, anything, but decide to make it tragic, decide to make the stakes life or death, decide to not necessarily have a happy ending, decide to not reaffirm the meaning of things at the end, all the things that make it horror, is a, is a brilliant way to go and is a very fresh way to go. Now, it is something that's more possible now than maybe it was before. So it's like a template, really. I mean, you can layer, you can layer, it, and that's what's cool. I think it's another way of saying what you said. Is you can take the clear plastic template of horror and put it on a comedy. You know, and then you can take it and you put it on a romance and you get, you know, let me in. You can take it and you can layer it on a historical thing and now you've got, you know, any number of things. But it's a template that you can actually, you almost want to start by saying, do I want to write a drama or a comedy or a family story? You know, and then you can layer horror onto any one of those templates or right? one of those, those formats. And so 